Welcome to the SEO.co Search Engine Optimization Podcast. Digital marketing essentials and next level tactics. From off-site and on-site optimization to persuasive selling and everything in between. You'll learn actionable tips on what it takes to outright and outrank your competition. Conversion Rate Optimization How to optimize website conversions with SEO Conversion Rate Optimization helps answer the following critical questions. How does your traffic behave when it actually gets to your site? What steps do your visitors take? How is your traffic translating into meaningful revenue for your business? When you fail to answer and improve upon these questions, you can generate all the traffic you like, and it won't matter to your bottom line. What you need is another step of the process a way to convert your inbound traffic into paying customers, or at least get them further down the marketing funnel. Earning more conversions is vital for your brand to stay afloat, but conversions come in dozens of different varieties, and the process is somewhat complicated. I'm here to walk you through everything you need to know about conversion optimization, from what qualifies as a conversion to ongoing best practices for success. Conversion Rate Optimization Overview First, we need to talk about what conversions are, why they're important, and some general points to keep in mind when optimizing your site for conversions. This is going to serve as the basic framework on which we'll build your direction and key strategies in the future. Why conversions are critical. You've probably converted, or been a conversion before, and recently, too. Have you bought anything online recently? Your purchase technically qualifies as a conversion. Have you downloaded any free content in exchange for some personal information? This is a conversion too. Conversions aren't just about getting people to pay you money. They're about getting your users to make a meaningful interaction with your brand. S.E.O.co uses conversion optimization tactics, just like you should. Even on our home page, conversion optimization is important because without any conversions, your traffic will pass through your site like water leaking out of a bucket. Once it's gone, it can't bring any value to your brand. Conversion optimization itself is important because most of the time, conversions don't happen on their own. Let's say you have the perfect product. It's cheap, it's something everyone needs, and it's something that generates mass appeal. You get plenty of traffic, but you never worked on your conversion strategy. You'll run into a number of potential problems. Your users might not understand how to buy your product. Your users might not realize your product is for sale. Your users may lose interest or procrastinate buying your product. The list goes on. On some level, conversion optimization is about making people want to buy your product or engage with your brand. But even more importantly, it's about giving them the power and opportunity to actually do it. Understanding your conversion goals. Before you get started in a conversion optimization campaign, you need to understand what your core goals are. Yes, you'll obviously want to increase conversions, but there are some other important elements to bear in mind here. Raw conversion power. The first and most obvious goal is increasing your total number of conversions. The greater percentage of visitors who convert, the more valuable your traffic is going to become and the more revenue you'll be able to generate for your brand. You can improve this rate in a number of ways. For example, you can create more conversion opportunities throughout your site make your conversion process easier to complete, or add a greater degree of urgency. I'll be digging into these strategies individually in later sections of this guide. Balancing conversions and traffic. Increasing conversions alone is good, but remember what I said in the introduction, it's only half the story. Conversion optimization is about increasing the average value of a visitor to your site, but what if you're only getting a handful of visitors? You'll also need to consider ways to increase the volume and relevance of traffic headed to your site, keeping it in balance with your conversion optimization efforts. For most businesses, this balance is difficult to strike at first, and they end up pouring too much effort into one over the other. Think carefully about your goals, and where you stand currently, then direct your efforts accordingly. Variations in conversion value. You also need to understand that not all conversions carry the same value. It's easiest to imagine this in terms of a product purchase. A user buying an item for a few dollars counts as one conversion, 
just as a user buying an item for thousands of dollars, yet clearly the latter is more valuable. Similarly, a strong lead filling out a contact form is more valuable than a new email subscriber signing up to receive new content from your brand. If you want to maximize your effectiveness, you'll need to keep these relative values in mind. Relying on data. Next, I want to explain the importance of relying on data. Throughout your conversion optimization process, from the beginning of your strategizing through the ongoing process of refinement and development, you'll need to rely on the scientific method and objective data to guide your actions. The dangers of assumptions. One of the biggest problems I see from newcomers is a tendency to rely on assumptions, and on multiple levels, too. They may assume they know how their target audience behaves, electing to go with one form design over another because it seems like something their target audience would prefer. For example, they may include a picture of a baby when trying to appeal to new parents. This may work, or it may not, you won't know unless you have some kind of objective data to back it up. Assuming too much will leave you trapped, unable to push your campaign forward, and you'll end up scratching your head when you don't see the results you thought you would. Proving conversion return on investment. Data is also important for proving the return on investment of your efforts. Conversion optimization itself won't demand much money from you. You might pay a professional to help you with your conversion efforts, or you might invest a few hours a week to the process, but it's relatively inexpensive to pursue. Where conversions really count is in how much money they bring in for your overall marketing campaign, where you'll spend countless hours and thousands of dollars to earn new traffic for your website. Only through objective analysis and measurement will you be able to prove the ROI of your campaigns. Continuous conversion rate improvements. This is an important principle to keep in mind for your conversion optimization efforts, and it ties into the problem with the assumption angle. Conversion optimization is about getting more conversions, so when you aren't getting any conversions, it seems appealing. Let's say, as a result of your efforts, you go from a rate of 0% to something like 2 or 3%. That's a pretty solid conversion rate. But at this point, most people get lulled into a state of complacency. They believe they've done a good enough job, and they don't strive to get even more conversions. The truth is, your conversion rate can almost always be higher but you have to keep striving for improvement if you want to see those rates budge. Starting with the research. Before you get involved with a campaign, you'll be conducting significant research to ground your campaign direction in an objective vision. There are many types of research you'll need to consider. Market research. First, you'll need to really get to know your target audience. You'll need to learn what's most valuable to them, what makes them take action, and what kinds of elements appeal to them. Hopefully, you already have a good understanding of this from your business planning and marketing efforts, but it doesn't hurt to do another run through to consider how your audience behaves in a conversion-oriented context. This is the point where you'll be asking these people for their money or their personal information, so you should know them pretty intimately before you start making any changes. Competitive research. You'll also want to look around at your competitors and see what they're doing. You may or may not be able to discern how well they're converting, as most sites don't publish their conversion rates, but you will at least get some ideas for how to start marketing to your target audience. Even with your limited familiarity on the conversion process, you'll be able to distinguish between competitors who have invested in their conversion plans and those who haven't. Take a look at the conversion investors, and carefully evaluate the tactics they use to convert bigger percentages of their inbound traffic. Essentially, they've already done some of the work for you. Conversion rate best practices. Conversion optimization best practices remain more or less the same, but marketing is also an ever-changing industry. Before diving into your campaign, it's a good idea to cruise around blogs specifically dedicated to helping you increase conversions. The SEO blog, of course, has a number of topics related to earning more revenue for your brand but you'll also want to check out blogs like Unbounce and HubSpot. This guide is meant to be an all-in-one resource for conversion optimization, but just as you can always do better with a conversion rate, you can always learn more about the process. A-B tests and crow experimentation. You have to keep working to improve your conversion rates, or else your campaign will stagnate, and you'll miss out on some extraordinary potential.
This section will explain the importance of experimentation, testing, measurement, and analysis in your campaign for better long-term results. The importance of experimentation. It's not enough to opt for an optimized conversion strategy. You have to put your changes to the test in a live environment, and more than that, you'll have to commit new changes to gradually improve your results as a kind of ongoing experiment. There are many values to ongoing experimentation. Discovering new conversion tactics. First, experimentation forces you to discover new tactics. When you force yourself to find new things to change, you'll tweak things you hadn't before considered. The resulting changes in your data, for better or worse, will lead you to new insights and new angles to which you were previously oblivious. It's the only way to keep moving forward. Thank you for joining us on the SEO.co podcast. We appreciate your time. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the show and visit SEO.co for more resources based on today's topic, as well as access to more podcast episodes to help you improve your site's long-term SEO success.